Uh, my name is Patricia, and uh, thank you, Rob, for inviting me, even though I'm not a good singer. Um, thank you, Moran, for engaging in this, even though I represent the fluffy uh, science of psychology. Um, I actually look at the human mind, the emergent of what happens when all those neurons kind of fire. Um, and today, what I want to talk about is the art and science of remembering the future, because it turns out we actually remember the future. Um, and if you know, this actually comes from a quote from a book that I will actually talk about quite a bit. Um, three things, because our human attention span is quite short. I tell you three things I'm going to talk about. The first one is, how do you remember the past that it makes you better, not bitter? Anybody would like that? Useful? <laughs> I'll talk about how do you remember the present, actually, to give yourself and give others the most precious and the most scarce resource we have, which is human attention. This is by far the most scarce resource we have right now. And how do you remember the future so that it's strong enough to pull you versus just the everyday life to, to push you uh, towards the future? And so um, I thought I would have 13 minutes, but I have seven, so I'm going to go speak really fast. Um, I like really the theme of vision and, and looking into astrophysics. Carl Sagan says, somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known. And I think that actually goes for human mind as well. Uh, the ability of human mind, how deep, how wide, and how um, mysterious it is. And we still, you know, there's Cambridge Analytica, there's all those algorithms trying to predict us and put math around our behavior and our mind, but I believe that there is still magic to the human nature and there is magic to the human mind. And I think there are incredible things to be explored within our own mind. And so, um, taking a thousand kind of feet view um, on the hu history of human, of human race, anybody know um, Yuval Harari? Bought the book, Sapiens? Actually read the book? Okay, that's impressive. The book is titled The Brief History of Humanity. It's not that brief, it's 400 pages. I'll give you the cliff notes, the executive summary. He says, actually, we have evolved and we became this apex predator that potentially you know, is destroying the world right now um, because of two things. The first one is our ability to tell stories, stories about the lands that don't exist, stories about abstract ideas such as nation, religion, um, money, human rights. And by telling those stories, we actually collaborate flexibly in large groups. And so, but this has been discovered before. When you actually look at um, the art, and this is a book that was published in 1865 through the Looking Glass, at least in Wonderland, what they're actually showing is what exactly what Moran was showing. We look at the world through some kind of looking, looking glass, and whether that is your eye, physical eye, or whether this is your eye, as in me, and my beliefs, and me, and my background, me, and my religion, and my skin color, or my political affiliation, we see the world in a way that we kind of expect it to be. Um, and if you read the book, uh, you probably remember the queen. Anybody remembers the queen? She had an interesting um, disorder, if you wish, uh, because she could only remember the future. And what she said to Alice, she said, it's a poor type of memory that only flows backwards. In other words, what she's saying is that maybe memory not only flows backwards, and time not only flows backwards, but actually maybe it flows forward. Well, this is the art. The science says precisely that. The science says actually that when you look at the you know, neurological circuits in your brain, when you think about the future, it's the parts of the brain that are responsible for thinking about the past that light up, medial prefrontal cortex and medial temporal cortex, which means that for most of the people, the future is continuation of the past. Right? So that means that it's very hard to imagine future. It goes against our natural neurological wiring to imagine future that's actually different than the past. Right? And so we get stuck in this loop. It used to be like this, it is like this, it will always be like this. And so when you look at the most visionary people, they're actually people who throw the hat so far away and say, I have a dream. I am imagining a future that is not a continuation of the past, which is actually a hard thing. It's going against our hardwiring. Um, and so Martin Luther King, he said, I have a vision, right? That my four little children live in a nation in which they will be judged not by the color of the skin, but actually by the merit of the character. Um, 3,000 years ago, Moses said, I have a vision. For 40 years, we're going to walk through this desert, and we part the sea, and then there will be the promised land, and people united, and people walk. And so the people who are able to create visions who are actually discontinuation of the past, what we see in the research are also the most prolific leaders. They're leaders who actually change the, the nature of the history. Those are also the people, if you look at the research around engagement and work, 
um, who really make people engage. This is also a future that's so compelling that actually pulls in versus us being pushed by just you know, the flow of time, because the flow of the time will push us anyway. Um, this division is so powerful that we will actually make us you know, engage in life and learning. And finally, it is the intrinsic motivation and motivation that is not dependent of ROI or you know, where am I in the packing order, am I, where do I want to go, but it's a vision that actually lights you up. When you think about vision, it's on, it turns you on. Um, and so what I would like to do is spend some time and space with you right now, because I only have three minutes left, 10 minutes less than what I expected, um, and do some mind hacking, and do some bending time and space. Who's, who's into that? OK, give somebody a high five. Your neighbor. I'm from New York, so. <laughs> Good. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do literally three minute, very quick mind travel. But in order to do that, you need to close your eyes. Otherwise, you won't see anything, as Alice said. And uh, what we're going to start, we're going to start in here and now, is remembering the present. Because most of the time, we actually forget ourselves. Uh, we leave, and we leave ourselves, we leave others. And so take a deep breath in and just get yourself anchored. That's right. Imagine that your consciousness is actually getting liquefied. So you can feel, you can feel anything and everything within your body. And this is your anchor here and now. This is the groundedness and the presence. Where your attention goes is the gift that you give, especially to yourself right now. And I invite you to imagine a book of life. And this is a book of your life. So it's half written, half not written. It's open on today. And it's some kind of writing. It's probably your writing. Or whoever is writing the book for you, in fact. I invite you to imagine that you're actually flipping the pages backwards to some moment in time that you felt grateful that there was either an act of kindness or something good that happened in your life that you're grateful for, that got you where you are now. And just take a note of that. What was that moment that you feel grateful for? And flip it a little bit more earlier, another moment in space and time that you're grateful for, because something good happened. And finally, one more flip. Somewhere early in the childhood, what happened that you feel grateful for? Maybe it was an act of kindness. Maybe you did something. Maybe somebody did something for you. And just anchor that in. And now I invite you to use your intuition, instinct, and imagination and flip the book of life forward somewhere into the blank pages. You don't really know where, how, why you end up on this page. It most likely is empty and blank. But it's somewhere in the future. I invite you now, in your mind's eye, to look around and see what you see, and see that the world is somehow different. And it's different because you did something. Maybe it's people interacting with each other differently. Maybe the nature is different. Maybe you're different. What is the vision that's pulling you right now? And see that whatever it is, it's good. And that makes you feel very proud because you've done a great job. And just feel whatever it is and see whatever it is, hear whatever it is, and notice, are you there by yourself? Are you there with others? Would, did others help get you there? And whenever you're ready, very slowly and gently flip the book of life back to here and now, seeing that, it's, again, it's half written, half unwritten, getting anchored again in here and now. Whenever you're ready, open your eyes. And if you uh, look around, get yourself reoriented. If you see anybody's eyes, you can smile at them. It can be me. I'm very happy to take some smiles. The question of what turns you on, right? Is it going to be something that is pushing you, or is it something that's really calling you out from the future? And as Moran showed, the brain does not really see the difference. It almost it gets anchored as a physical sensation that we're going to go forward towards. Now, there's very interesting research showing that you know, there's all this talk about willpower and self-control, but it actually turns out that that is a um, scarce resource, um, especially our self-control, which some of us know that. Um, there are other actually emotions that increase our self-control and willpower, one of which is pride. But it's not the pride 
is not this toxic pride, but it's the authentic pride. It's being proud of what one has done with its life. Another one is gratitude. That's why I anchor you in the gratitude. Um, acts of kindness. And finally, it's compassion. It turns out that the most um, prolific visionaries, the people who actually changed their life, their vision included others. It's not only vision of how I am and how great I am, but actually how have I contributed to the society around me. Because this is also the vision that you can pull others with, with you into. Um, I know there's an exercise to be done before the dinner, um, but there's actually a piece of research that's showing that actually language, our narrative, that our ability to look at the past and imagine the future is actually, was actually a prerequisite for, for creation of the language as human beings, which is quite interesting, which shows us the unique ability of humans um, to think about the future, learn from the past, and talk about it, and get all those groups of people to collaborate. And so, um, maybe I'll just show you one last perspective. Um, this is a random quote that floats on the internet, but since uh, you know, the, the, the theme here is changing perspective, is this one. Maybe this, this will gel with somebody. Um, you're a ghost, driving a meat coat and skeleton, made from stardust, riding a rock, floating through space, and therefore you should fear nothing. And uh, with this, I'll end. Um, the journey is not easy, it's complex, it's hilly, and it's very... Um, very windy, but as we know, the journey of 1,000 steps starts with the very first one. And so thank you for your attention.